two, session two. Let's have a look at what we're working on. Just to remind you, this is a photograph sent to me by uh, Bruce, who Bruce has actually had uh, a couple of my paintings before, two or three maybe, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I know I've painted, I think, a couple of his uh, lovely VW Porsches. And that, so it's nice to, it's nice to get people coming back. Um, uh, it's, uh, I think the first one I painted was part of the I Paint Your VW uh, project, which will be back now, five years ago. So it's nice to see people return. Let's have a look where we're at. What we're doing at the moment is I've just been working on the, the background here to try and uh, get some texture in there. And it's coming along okay. Where's that? There we go. This is where we're at. We're at this point with it. You can see, it's still, see here, I've still got the mask in place. Uh, and I've been working on this, uh, this background area. I'm just going to, I think, just try and get a little bit more texture into the background area. Get some darks in there. What you're trying to do, I think, when you're working like this, is to not get too finicky and to try and let the brush and the surface of the paper do a lot of the work for you. Watercolour paper is wonderful to work with in many ways in the fact that because it's got a nice surface to it, a nice texture to it, you can drag the top of you brush over the top of those that surface and you can get some really nice textures from just flicking the brush across the surface. People call it, it's called dry brushing, but um, I hope you can see there that it's actually starting to look, pardon me, it's starting to look like foliage rather than, uh, rather than paint. Dancing over the surface and finding different areas of similar densities. Yeah. And just putting in there these textures. Light in some places, heavier in others. You go really dark in, a, in this part here. And then just a, maybe just add a little bit to this without making it too as, without making it as dark as the rest of rest of it because we do want this bush to stand proud. Just flecking in. texture what we don't want it to do is to is to become flat again we want to keep it textured we want to keep it and that's it so that it loops real we're not we're not washing at this point we're not putting washes on we're adding texture 
which will do us until we take that um, masking off, which I will do very, very soon. You can speed things up with um, a hairdryer, but I, I, I'm wary about uh, doing that sometimes because it can it can change the nature uh, of the paint surface slightly if you do that. Had a nice lunch. Just finished it. Uh, even though it's getting on for tea time now but we've Jane and I have made the effort this last uh, few weeks and we have started going to the gym which is great we both decided that it's time we did something um, to improve our fitness as well as uh, to reduce the weight again I actually have well we both have uh, been up and down like yo-yos this last um, couple of years. I decided that I was way overweight. Uh, I'm diabetic and I went for a um, checkup at the doctors and they told me that uh, my diabetes was on the verge of being out of control and I had to do something about it. So I lost a load of weight. I went, I, I went from 18 and a half stone down, stone down to 12 stone uh, in nine months by, by going to Slimming World, which was fine, which was great, and I kept it off for a few months, but then it piled back on. I went up again, and then I decided I've got to do it again, and I did it again last year during, uh, during uh, lockdown, and I lost a few stone again, and then it back on it's so difficult to keep it off but um, this time I think we're doing it properly because we're exercising as well and I'm actually I find I'm actually enjoying going to the gym which for me is a big thing because you know, I've never enjoyed exercise I've always been the kid at school with uh, with the note every week for PE uh, I hated it I'm just telling you these things just to pass the time while the um, Well, the paper dries over there. Before, let's drive over here and start working over here in a minute. But I'm going to take off the mask. There we are. As you can see, with the, uh, with the paper mask removed, we're starting to see the cars emerge again. And if I start to work away at the... surface here to get rid of the the masking fluid you'll see as it comes off it's leaving areas underneath that we can now paint into and bring to life and make them more natural is what I'll do next. You can see that the areas that I put successive layers of there we are, that I put successive layers of masking on have retained different colours. So the the first layer is here and it's retained the um, the white of the paper which is where we're going to put the trees uh, but these bits here this uh this masking here this is the grasses and the grasses we painted a, a wash if you remember underneath first a yellowy sort of wash uh, and so they've retained that yellowness of that wash get all this off it's quite a satisfying thing peeling it all away 
and seeing it all come back to back to uh, its original giving you a lot of options as to what you can do with it next I think we cut most of it off there it's good taking it off with your fingers because you, if you run your finger over the surface you can feel where the uh, if there's any less on the surface and you don't want that it's uh, it's very easy to leave a little bit of masking in place now you can see here what's happened here I don't know whether you can see there's a couple of little bits here where there was a gap in the masking that I hadn't noticed uh, luckily they that can be that's going to be sorted out when I it's actually in an area that's going to be black more or less so that doesn't matter too much always reminds me of those moments in the uh, you know films like Batman and things like that where the the, the person has been heavily disguised and they had a latex prosthetics attached to their face and they do this unveiling where they pull away at this latex and off it comes and there's, underneath there's the real criminal, you know. But so... Uh, let's cut most of that off there. This is dry enough to just run my thumb over. And it's see here that it's leaving us with with some highlights. Now, I'm, at the moment, that's very artificial. It's not very real looking. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work into that with my brush. Work some textures into it. I think before I do that, maybe I'll just renew the pencil line here so I can see what I'm doing where I'm going and uh, because the latex does tend to take off some of the Some of the pencil that you put on, I don't want to lose the drawing underneath and get myself lost. Pardon me. I think I will. I think I'll just put a little bit of masking on, just as a protection for the car while I just do the trees. Where's my? There it is using the, the mapping pen again just to get a bead just there and again a bead across the top of this car don't need it there because we've already painted there really and again across the top of this part here okay other than that i'll just be careful around the uh, edges So let's just work into this slightly to try and make it a little bit more natural. I 
I'm just new the little speckles to come through as highlights. darken down quite a bit, we don't want the sparkly highlights there, so the tree is going to be, and over here, let's just dancing the brush across the surface really just want to there we go yesterday's dirty paint just to delineate the change in the in the brush right now let's have a look at the trees we'll work on this bit over here last because my hand goes that way and I don't want to work on it and then smudge it so let's work across the across the page and I'm going to use this as I've been talking about it before the palette this is the dirty paint from yesterday as I call it the dirty palette because this is actually probably going to be similar color to the colour that I want for the trees, let's make sure that, yeah, that's pretty good. See, the thing is that trees are one of those things with trees is that we often are often under a misconception about trees that tends to come from childhood, I think. We, are, we sort of are taught that trees have brown trunks and green leaves. And it's the way that we... We perceive them because we've been sort of told that's the way it is. Whereas 
in reality, if you take a look at any trees around you, I can look out of the window here, and I actually, well, we've got a few trees in the garden and outside, and only a few of them have brown trunks. Yes, they've all got green leaves. But only a few of us have got brown trunks. The uh, majority have got sort of greeny, beigey sort of trunks. Pardon me. And there's an element of green in, in most of them. And so when you paint them, to get them to look natural, you don't draw, paint them with brown trunks. tone across that one and what I'm doing here is I'm using up the um, the green paint that I've used in the background that's a little bit dark not it now it isn't and it's textured now which is nice texture to it, that's it. So I'm using up the greens of the of the background and I'm mixing them in with some of the paint I've got left over from the shadow areas in yesterday's painting. That's it. Now it's important, sometimes there will be a sharp line, like here, there's a sharp line on this one. But this tree over here that I'm working on, that sort of blends more into the background at, at the side here. So we're going to do like a soft line there. And it goes quite light, which is how it stands out from the tree that's next to it. So yeah, I hope you can see that these are starting to look like tree trunks now and, and I haven't painted one of them brown. Now this next tree is very, very light in the picture. Um, so that's try and get that light sort of grey grey greeny sort of colour There. 
has a little bit more of a texture in there. Give it a little bit of that's it, makes it makes it look a little bit more round. And then I like these ones. These are the trees hiding in the foliage. The the hidden trees that are just popping out slightly from the uh, from the background there. not to lose the, the grass there I'll just darken it down there trick these leaves a little bit see it do it before you forget it that's the, that's the answer here and this one is really quite hidden in the darkness and has a lot of foliage sort of coming over the top of it which we don't want to lose make it even darker down this edge Uh, I hope you can see it there that it's starting to look uh, a little more natural. Now then, I just want to. Now, add a little dirty yellow into this area here. to try and make these look a bit more natural So I don't want them to stand out too much. There we go. I think for the moment that that will that will suffice there we 
go, that's the background trees done. I might, as I say a bit, I might just tweak a little bit here and there, just to give it a bit more. Uh, try and make it a little bit more real. That's it. So I knew I put my hand over that bit. That's what I do if I'm not careful. I do it with green hands. Pardon me. There we go. Now there's just another little bit of green here. Where we have the the grass verge. And let's just try and I very rarely will put a green straight out of the pot onto the picture without mixing it with something else just to give it that little bit of bit of extra there we go I'll do me for the moment I'll dry lighter so now what now you may ask well what now is the road surface Oh, come on, get working on those cars, you're thinking to yourself. No, not yet. Let's get the let's get the road surface in. Because it's a nice big area. Once that big area is gone, we start to see the tones of the cars better. We need to keep balancing things. And until we get the actual road surface in place, it, it doesn't have, uh, it won't have that feel. Uh, of a, a, a road and then we're going to build the cars from the ground up you'll see what happens so where's my big brush big brush and I think I'm going to get rid of the pool of blue in the middle of the dirty palette because I don't want it to be blue just give it a little bit of a a wash with the, the brush you can't see what I'm doing here but all I'm doing is cleaning a little bit of old paint off the china palette get a, a kitchen roll in there wipe it up there it is gone and I'll use that center part to mix the color for the road surface I say mix mostly it's going to be made up of one colour. But it's actually very light. Um, maybe you'd like to see the original again. If you see that road surface, it's very light. It's very grey with a slightly blue tinge. So I think we get that on quite quickly. Remembering that it goes underneath the cars as well. What's, how, what colour is this going to be? Let's just test it a little bit on a bit of paper. Uh, okay, you can't see what I'm doing. Let's put it back. There we go. Test it on a bit of paper. Now that's very dark. It wants to be a lot lighter than that. So, a lot more water. Add a touch of Payne's to it. Payne's grey as well. Just to give it the slight bluey tint. How's that going to look? Oh, I like that. That's much better. That's much better. So I've got enough there, I think, to do the whole of the floor. A little bit more water. I want it to be very light. And I want it to be quite smooth. So we'll try and get it in fairly quickly to 
taking care to avoid going over that curve there. Doesn't matter if we go over where the, the tyres are going to go and the bumpers because they're going to be dark anyway. But um, So we can paint over those, no problem. Now remember, as you put it on, I don't know whether you're used to working with watercolour, you might not be an artist, you might just be an observer. Uh, but I'll tell you, when you put it on, watercolour dries lighter than you put it on just slightly that's it that's that's going to be okay i think it's quite quite similar to what's there i might end up adding a little bit of texture to it make it more interesting we'll have to see um but that's Pretty much that that's quite good. And now this area here is lighter but only slightly. Right, we'll just let that dry. Lid back on the pot there. Maybe for the next session, so I will actually bring in a hairdryer just to dry things off quicker so that you're not hanging around literally watching paint dry, which isn't that much fun, is it? But hey, there we go. So there we have the background in, really, as much as it's going to be, maybe tweaked once we get the cars in. But for the moment, that's going to be it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is going to be a surprise to some of you. Some of you artists out there. Cars have lines. We were talking about this earlier on. And some of those lines need to be sharp. And some of those lines are very, very dark, more or less black. And so what I'm going to do is I have a set of very nice pens here called pigment liners. And they go from very, very, very fine to a brush. And let's see which one I'm going to use. That's probably quite a good one to use. Use that one and a, and a thicker one. That's a good one there. Drop one on the floor. Excuse me. Pick it up. Sorry about the noises. Those of you who might have listened to some of the and watched some of the earlier sessions that we did, yeah, the ones that I did yesterday and the one that I did this morning, might have noticed if you were listening with headphones on that 
my voice was only coming out of one ear. Uh, I apologise for that. I didn't realise myself until I was listening back to one with headphones on. Uh, on my phone and I realised there was a setting wrong on the uh, recording software. So you will find now, hopefully, that my voice is coming out of both your ears. So it won't sound so odd. If we take a look here, there are certain areas on here that are very, very sharp, very sharply delineated and very, very black, very dark. And I keep moving my mouse on there as if you can see. Let's go back to the, the picture and you'll be able to see me point things out to you. Let's use this. If you look here, there's a line here above the number plates and a line below here that are dark and but they're sharp and they're clean. And it's very difficult with a, a paintbrush to get that. The same goes for the numbers on the number plates. They're sharp and they're clear. And this line across the here is very sharp and very clean. And very straight. Same goes for here. Same goes for the small car in the in the very background. Yesterday, some of you watched me painting the girl on the beach, and I made um, a, uh, made a, a thing of the fact that I paint in the dark areas a lot earlier than other watercolorists do. We are told as watercolorists that we paint from light to dark, which is all very well, but sometimes it's good to get the darks in. And these pigment pens are filled with, this is pigment ink in them, and it's not going to fade. It's going to last as long as the watercolors. And just using it, um, to do the sharp lines early on gives gives a, a nice finish to the car paintings. I discovered this quite a long time into having spent a long time with a brush trying to get sharp lines uh, on these on these car paintings, and then I realised that actually I can use these pens, that's the brush, and not only does it save me some time, but it looks a heck of a lot better. Let's put in the line along the bottom of this car, which is a straight line. It was done by a machine, unlike the line that I've drawn freehand, this is a nice, sharp, straight line. realize that here where the tire is comes around there like that and so I'm going to put that in I'm also going to put in the line at the edge of the tire that's coming here because that's very very dark the line at the bottom and the line here along the bottom of the car is also very sharply delineated against the background 
where you can see the exhaust and everything underneath hanging down bits of the suspension Side line of the tire. And the inside of the exhaust pipe. Very dark. Very sharp. Same goes for the lines on the tire of the tread of the tires. Which is this one here. That will blend in. Still going to be very dark. Just going to stand out a little bit there. And then here, and then here, and across this number plate, let's get in here. There's a bit in here, which is the shadow in the wheel well. That's it. I'm, doing the, I'm not going to outline the whole car, but what I'm looking at is the areas that are darker. Set. You can go along here as well. There we go. There's an area on the inside of this window. It goes down here. That is very dark. Dark enough to be black. And the whole... This is the rubber on the back window, isn't it? Which is nice and dark. And down here. See, these lines might seem sharp at the moment and harsh, but they will quite quickly
they will quite quickly fit in when we start putting the paint on. I wouldn't do this with a figure or whatever like I, with like the painting that I did yesterday but when you're talking about cars we're not talking about a figure anymore are we we're talking about now then there's a so the hood that's folded up and that is a line that's why I wasn't too worried about that green paint there there's a line where the fold of the of the of the hood is because this is the, the difference isn't it between a targa and a convertible in the convertible the whole thing comes off but in a, a targa it still leaves the the back window in place and the bit between the the front and the back disappears that when we did down and then the seat belt as it comes down is almost black as well So that's apart from the numbers, which I will do probably after I put the yellow on. Ah, now get, let's get the finer pen. That was a point 0.8. This one is a tiny thing. This is a point 0.1. And we can see the the shadow here, the line where the book comes down which then goes very straight across the back of the car until it gets there and it goes just slightly up uphill The other line we'll put in with paint, I think. Okay, so the next thing is the car behind it. start with the car at the very back here which we've lost some of the pencil from so I'll just have to guess some degree 
there's the the target at the top the hood that's been folded up now then on the wheels there's this part of the wheel here this part of the, the wheel in front that we can see it comes on a slope there then there's this part of the car that comes across here Oh, the underbelly actually is the bottom bit in it. it on that car except for around, around another plate which I'll look at separately this one is a bit here there's a recess on top of the number plate There is the shadow where the top is folded up. then on this one we've got the two tires one in front of the other we've got the other tire Change over to the, this one again.
so pardon me this is where I start talking uh, less and less again this happens every day like this because the more I get into the detail the more I end up having to concentrate and the less I end up talking but I I don't think it, I don't know whether it matters too too much really that I, whether I'm talking or not what you're really doing is watching me watching me paint aren't you and watching me draw That's a nice fine one. There we are, that's better. And here. We have the number of plates. Question is, how much do I delineate? And the answer is, to be honest, not that much. It's very fiddly trying to put the numbers on a on a thing that small so we're just going to indicate that that is that there are numbers there and just let it let it be like that wouldn't pass me driving pet test reading it can you read that number plate from that distance um not really no um does that matter no it doesn't Just make sure that I've got the, uh, the lines marked here as the lights units, a yellow, a red, and that's it. That's white. Where the little bits of black in and then the yellow goes there because what we've got sitting out here is the wing mirror of the car in front same goes for this here this belongs to the car in front It's the wing mirror, so make sure to keep that separated from that car. Right, what I quite often like to do next is to paint inside the windows right 
Actually, let's excuse me for one moment. I'm just going to go and get a drink. It's very dry in here. It's extremely hot in this little studio with the, all the lights on and everything. It's not that hot outside, but uh, I have to say I am feeling quite thirsty and hot, so I'm going to go and get myself a drink. Let's, uh, there we are, back in a minute. You can take a, a look at the picture as it is so far, which I think you can probably see emerging nicely. better. Let's have a glass of orange juice. Now then, out with the masking again. <coughs> there we go. Um, there are just one or two little places on these cars that are very, very, that need that little white highlight to remain. And so what I'm just doing here, so I don't lose those white highlights, is I'm going to just put a little bit of masking here and there. So that when I paint on the on the top of them, we don't actually 
there's the the highlights down there down the side of that window and to some degree right over the top of the window here definitely down the inside there. These are some of the sort of lightest parts of the whole picture so we want to make sure we don't lose them in any way. This bit here Down the edge of the window, almost in a straight line. reflection coming around here it comes along here and then narrows off as it goes along right the way along here so we'll just draw that in Blints there and there. A reflection that comes around there. Another bit of a glint of a reflection there. It's so much easier to actually mask these out than it is to try and avoid them when you're painting in the paintwork because you don't want to mess about too much with the paintwork because you want to get it realistic and gleaming you want to get these the feel of the paint work being smooth and pristine and so we're putting in taking out these protecting these reflections in the car paintwork just we'll probably color them after we've done the paintwork but it the moment it re reflects the there we are it, we're getting the bits that are reflecting the light and that's going to be nice and bright and we are retaining them. Making sure we don't lose them. I think we'll do the same with this bit as well.
Okay. And this bit along the top of the real arch of the water. Retain that. A little bit of a white rim around the exhaust and some line. I don't know why, but there's a line that's going along there which will also mask out. Is, but it's there, so let's mask it out. And I think that's that's that, that little bit across here. Do nicely, as they used to say on the older American Express adverts. windows now the thing is with the windows that they are very similar to the greens of the background but they do tend to either lighten or darken so we'll start by putting in Dark, where is a figure in this seat, so I'll have to be careful not to obliterate the figure. to darken down to it looks like it darkens down to a sort of much more of an olive in here probably needs to be a bit darker and to go down here
Cut. Uh, I don't know whether it's the person, whether the person's sitting or whether it's something in the back window here, but just let it drop back. There we go. And I think this is the back of someone's head here or something. disappointed that hardly anybody's talking to me I know by looking at the uh, analytics afterwards that there are a few people dropping in and out as a join the during the day so I'm hanging around for quite a while but everybody's just watching I think so if you if you are watching, if there's anybody out there watching, and you want to engage with me in any way, you can write into the chat window, and I will I will talk to you. <laughs> Obviously not if you're watching this, you know after after the event. Uh, I mean you can put something in the in the in the comments section or in the chat, then and I will be able to type back to you, but I won't be talking back to you because we won't be in real time. This is a bit obvious, isn't it? What am I rambling on about? Oh, this is all good fun.
Okay, so let's have a look. It's interesting, actually. Somebody's just, just did a little link ended up coming on my phone, so I can actually see uh, what I'm doing on the phone here. And there is about a minute's delay, my guess is, between me doing something or me saying something and, uh, and it appearing on Facebook. So that's interesting. I see there's one person watching on Facebook, two people watching on Facebook. Hello, people watching on Facebook. It's nice to see you. Uh, unless I actually look on the, this uh, little screen down here, I don't ever set to see who's watching. If you wish to type in the chat uh, at any point, uh, I am happy to um, engage with people and to, uh, you know, maybe it make me feel a little bit less lonely sitting here in the room where you're all on my own, Gavna, and all that sort of thing, or whatever. <laughs> Silly me. I don't know. Let's uh, have a crack on here. Oh, hello, Karen. Hi to you too. At last, somebody speaks to me. You are, I think, my turning into my super fan on this uh, on this project. I'm very aware that you are watching and taking it all in, which is lovely. What's life like in the good old US of A at the moment? I bet. Which part of Texas are you in? I can't remember. I've been to to Houston. Uh, my brother used to live in Houston. He keeps moving about. I'm not sure where he is at the moment. But uh, I have been to Houston. Oh, how long ago was that now? 1993, I think it would be. So, gosh, it's getting on for quite a long time ago. But uh, I... I've been to Houston and I've been to, in, in the USA, I've been to um, New York, I've been to New Orleans, been to San Antonio. And I have to say, I absolutely loved being in the USA. Probably not for the best reasons, mate, a lot of the time, because the food is so good. Ah, oh, you're just outside of Houston. Oh, great. Oh, I, 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 I was in Houston in the last week of October and the first week of November in 1993, and it was hot. Even at that time of the year, the temperature was up in the 80s, except for one day where I woke up and the sun disappeared. The temperature was something like 55 and it rained in a way that I've never seen rain in my entire life. It was absolutely torrential. I, I parked the car at what I think you call a strip center over there, uh, if I remember rightly. Uh, and I just got out of the car to run into a shop or store, as you would say, and in the six feet between getting out of the car and actually getting under cover of the canopy on the on this uh, strip centre, I was soaked to the skin. I have never known rain like it. 
but I did very much enjoy being in Houston, though everybody thought I was Australian, which is, <laughs> which is, uh, makes, makes, made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, do you know, I, I, I mean, I'm, no spring ticking, I'm getting on here. Uh, and I've actually only ever been to Scotland once, and that was a couple of years ago. Uh, my daughter lives in Carlisle at the moment, and we went up to see her, and we went across the border to Gretna Green. And that's the only time I've actually ever been to Scotland. I've been to America more times than I've been to Scotland. I've got some great rem memories of Texas. One of the things I do remember about Texas is that uh, people would talk to me when I first got there. And I would say, I remember saying to people, um, you know, they'd say, how long have you been here? And I'd say, oh, I'm, I'm, this is my first time in, uh, in America. And uh, the answer kept coming back, boy, you ain't in America. You're in Texas. And they're very independent people in Texas, aren't you? The Lone Star State. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that. It was rain like I have certainly never, ever experienced anywhere else at any other time. But, uh, there we go. I did have a quick look yesterday at your Facebook page after You've been making comments on what I was doing yesterday. See if I could see any of your paintings, but I couldn't actually, didn't actually see any of them. There was a very interesting picture there uh, of you with a, a uh, you and a friend with a stat by a statue of a guy playing the guitar, and I was wondering who that was. <laughs> it was indeed, wasn't it? Yeah, remember the Alamo and all that. I, uh, my brother and I drove to uh, San Antonio on the first week I, I was staying with him. Uh, and we went to the Alamo and went to the, the IMAX cinema there that they've got on the Alamo that um, tells you all the story of, of, of it of, of all. Uh, This is a very different painting than yesterday's painting, isn't it? 
definitely the yesterday's painting was um was delightful to do lost count now of how many cars I've painted over the last few years. I never imagined that I was going to be a painter of cars. But uh, the cars have been good to me. Yeah. I've sold a lot of car pictures. This is really interesting actually. I I can see the uh, what I'm doing on the phone here and I can see the delay but actually the delay seems to have got shorter. Um, and I also I'm seeing my own voice coming up captioned on my screen which is rather funny. Right, that's getting there. surprised by how well our internet connection seems to be uh, holding up with the streaming because we don't got the, haven't got the fastest internet connection in the world but uh, but it seems to be coping with it quite well right let's well we've got the grey going let's get the greys on the Back of the car. Oops. Too much there. I don't know how I would have got on painting and watercolours if they hadn't have invented kitchen roll. I am totally lost without piece of kitchen roll in my left hand. There we go. That's that. That's that.
This is where the taking the time to put the masking fluid on comes into its own because if you was it's much easier to spend some time fiddling about with uh, a bit of masking fluid than it is trying to put back things that you've accidentally painted over as you've been uh, as you've been doing this this lot this sort of thing okay that's that's okay there I've just noticed actually there's a reflection or two on that car that probably needs masking out let's put a bit of masking fluid on while I do that while I think of it before I forget this stuff is my this brilliant stuff I love it I must have got through gallons of this stuff over the last well, how long is it since I started to take painting seriously um, gosh I would have been about 28, 29, so probably about 36 years ago uh, was I, when I started to take painting seriously. So I've got through an awful lot of masking fluid in that time, believe me. And a little bit. This is the same because I want to be able to just put the paint on quite fluidly the green paint on the, on the red paint and the yellow paint I think it's really cute this picture it really is I, I like it a lot I think, hope it's, uh, hope I'm going to do it justice Should I do that? Or should I try and paint it on afterwards? I think I'll try and paint it on afterwards. It never looks right when it's just cancelled out. Ah, so, what time is it now? It's... It's coming up to six o'clock, so I guess it's just about lunchtime in Texas. <laughs> I did enjoy eating in Texas, I must say. Most of the time with these tones here you're actually just putting the same colour on on top of itself over and over again and just building it up in layers As you build up the layers you just get more pigment going a bit on a bit of pigment on top of each other whoops banging into the microphone very unprofessional um too much 
just a quick dab and there it is gone. Hi Jeff, hey. Long time no see matey. How's life? Yeah, Karen, I tell you, I, if I lived in Texas, I would be like 30 stone. I mean, anywhere in America, actually. When it, my son and I uh, went to uh, New York a few years back and the food was just, oh, it's just to die for. I mean, really. I asked, uh, I asked the guy that was uh, sitting security in the, well, apartment complex, I suppose, that we stayed in, couldn't really call it a hotel, um, in New York, just off, I think we were on 41st Street, and uh, I said, where is the, that's good to eat? And he said, do you like BBQ? I said, yeah, I like BBQ. And he said, the, the Dallas BBQ on 42nd Street. And so Julian and I went to the Dallas BBQ on 42nd Street. I have never seen anything like it in my life. It was incredible. The, there was a queue out, out of the building. There were so many people waiting to get in. You go up an escalator, or I don't know whether you call it an escalator up over there, but uh, to get in there, and the restaurant's upstairs, and you're queuing, and they are there. Then you go up the escalator a bit at a time, a few at a time. Then you get to the top of the escalator, and you're in the body of the restaurant, but you put into this holding area while they find somewhere to seat you. But within like a couple of minutes, you're there being seated. You haven't had time to actually adjust yourself on the seat hardly. And there's a waiter there asking what you'd like. You order what you'd like. And within two minutes, it's there on the table in front of you, smoking away, steaming away. And it was incredible. The food was just fantastic. I will always remember it. Well, Jeff, busy is good. Busy is good. Better to be busy than be skint, isn't it, mate? Oh, I, I do you know I've got a photograph somewhere in my in my photographs. I'll I'll search it out and show you. I've got a photograph of what was on my plate that day, uh, and a photograph of what Julian had. I think we had basically we had everything on the plate. I think I seem to remember that there were there uh, was um, steak. And there was prawns or shrimp, I think you call it over there, don't you? And uh, oh God, it was piled high, and fries and uh, and everything. And uh, there was um, the bit that the bit that I wasn't used to, and I didn't really know what to do with. That on the plate with everything was a lump of cornbread, and I'd never seen that before. Uh, it was just a, I think, a strange thing to an Englishman to see cake on a, uh, as we would call it, a piece of cake on the plate.
<laughs> too true, Joe. Too true, Jeff. Definitely. It's, uh, hope you've not had too difficult a time this last 18 months. It's been, uh, pretty difficult for, for us oldies, isn't it, matey? For anybody that's uh, that, that, that that's watching, Jeff and I go back a very very long way. We uh, Jeff and I were into the sixth form together uh, about a million years ago, I think, wasn't it, Jeff? And uh, we were very good friends back then, my friend, weren't we? We. Uh, we discovered the wonderful world of acting together at, uh, at, at the Sixth Form College. We were in, in plays together. In fact, the first, film, the first play that we were in together was actually set in uh, America, wasn't it? Dark of the Moon. Dark of the Moon by Howard Richardson and William Burney. I've remembered their names all these years. The story of witchcraft. Like I always... At that time, I definitely wanted to be an actor, but I never got there. I worked in the theatre, but I never actually ended up getting on stage. Did about every other job you can think of, but never ended up going on stage. <laughs> I can remember my first line too I think I still do the voice I was playing a, a young boy Floyd Allen and uh I remember I remember I was standing in the wings waiting to come on to say my to say my first line and in this totally I am sure Karen absolutely awful American accent I came out and I and I had said at the top of my voice in my dungarees and checky shirt and everything I said pa pa there's an eagle out there pa it's a flying and a, and a calling I'm sure it's the biggest eagle I ever did see see I can still do it. It's funny how you remember these things, isn't it, De Jeff? That would have been... Cool, what are we now? Oh, a bloody long time ago, I tell you. <laughs> 1975, would it be? 75, 76, something like that. <laughs> really, Bob Brown I tell you. I remember that, that as well. All the words to Barbara Allen all changed for the play. Was it a witch boy from the mountain came, a pining to be human, for he had seen the fairest lads. 
a girl named Barbara Allen. Yay, I remember it. <laughs> oh, that was a lot of fun. Singing all these revivalist hymns and things in, in the church scene and all that sort of thing. Wonderful. Oh, happy days. I have to say, now people are actually chatting to me. It's, it's, it's a lot more, it's a lot more fun and enjoyable than it was just sitting here painting on my own. Definitely, especially going down memory lane. There we go. One of, one of my favourite things nowadays, going down memory lane. The family take the mickey out of me because I'm there again. Oh, when I worked in the theatre. Oh, did you work in the theatre? Yeah, I didn't know you worked in the theatre. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a long time ago now, I suppose. Doesn't seem like it, though. It only seems like a few years ago. It's funny that's getting old lark. I don't like it very much. But the alternative sucks, that's what I always say. funny actually this sort of painting and talking thing people always used to when I was drawing people in the streets uh, I, I, I talked about it earlier on I don't know whether you were listening or whatever but I, I talked about it earlier on I used to uh, when I first got it back into painting again in the late 80s and started to take it seriously I used to paint portraits and draw well draw portraits in the street to, to make some extra cash and I'd be drawing away and uh, I, I would be chatting to the people in the crowd uh, because quite often I mean it was a bit, there would be quite a crowd of people standing behind watching which I absolutely loved I was in my element give me a crowd of people <laughs> it, uh, but it meant that I was talking to people all the time and I would be talking to people in the crowd behind me I would be talking to people the people that I was drawing and people would say how can you how can you chat away like that and paint at the same time uh, and the answer is uh, the painting after a while after you've done it for a long time becomes instinctive your your eye sees your hand does what it does and your brain is somehow working subconsciously in the background it's a bit like um i suppose a bit like driving you once you've learned to drive you don't think about it do you And, uh, you know, I always loved having an audience. I loved drawing in the street because if you got, once you've got an audience, then your next sitter, which meant your next bit of money, was there waiting to come in behind you. 
so it was the, the thing to do was to engage the crowd what's that there what you say oh there indeed <laughs> the world premiere of Moses the original rock musical gosh oh what were we like eh young'uns and still me remember my first line from that as well but I, can, I can't remember that all I can remember was don't think he'll get away with this and then that was the first line but I can't remember the rest of them I can't remember any of the other lines <laughs> I do remember though I don't know whether you remember this uh, Jeff we we were I was playing the Pharaoh Pharaoh and we Egyptians were dressed in um, we got these big collars and headdresses and things and we had loincloths but not the ones like the Israelites wore they were indecent but we had these white loincloths and I had this belt thing that they'd made which had hung down in front and had pieces of uh, it had beads and that sort of thing and on the end of each one of these sort of beaded sort of layers there was a tennis ball painted gold and the whole thing looked very ornate it was wonderful uh, and my first the first thing that I had to do I would be standing with the court around me with my back to the audience in the darkness while the scene before went on and then the lights would come on to our section of the stage I would turn round point and I would say that line don't think he'll get away with this and this one day I turned round and as I turned round one of these tennis balls flew off this belt and just bounced across the stage very very slowly steadily and slowly and then rolled into the audience in total silence and I was supposed to stand there and not laugh I don't know how I did it <laughs> there were some good times I remember do you remember the um, the three girls doing the, the backing vocals um, while um, Phil was doing the David Bowie impersonations David Bowie song all dressed in his Ziggy Stardust gear and the three girls were doing the backing vocals and they all just had pieces of like chiffon tied around their boobs uh, as part of this costume and 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 Ali um, just was um, a little bit too large for her ship on scarf let's let's put it that way she was ample and uh, <laughs> but they had this routine that if they were dancing as they were doing their movements their rehearsed sort of like supremes act they were doing the movements if one of them started to fall out they would say one of they would give a signal and all the in in synchronous in synchronicity with each other they would like tuck themselves back in so as it, as it, if it was part of the thing and there was one night and Ali was falling out and I seem to remember there was a vicar on the front row I don't know whether I've just remembered that wrong but I seem to remember there was a vicar right in front of it and she was falling out of this top and she said she said this word that they were supposed to say so to tuck themselves in and the, the other girl said we can't we've got our hands in the air sort of thing and they're waving it and it was a, a very close call let's put it that way <laughs> remember that but yeah I get you uh... <laughs> oh, there, there are some great memories from that time absolutely great memories I often I often think back to that time as one of the best times of my life definitely oh and actually, that that time at the Sixth College in Stoke, <laughs> that's right, 
that she, she, I just remembered that. Yes, she, they glued her in, didn't they, the next night? And so she was spirit gummed in so she wouldn't fall out. I've forgotten that. But, um, yeah, when you think back, that, that time at Sichuan College, yeah, I went into the theatre and worked in the theatre for 10 years. No, as I say, I never acted, but I did lots of other things. I was a stage manager and a technical manager and all sorts of different other things. Um, Sue Mary worked in the theatre and stage management for um, quite a lot of years. I know that. Um, and, of course, Phil is still acting. He's still there doing it. Um, and... Uh, who else was there? Oh, gosh, yes. Um, Adrian Rawlings, who uh, was... Um, what's his name, wasn't he? Harry Potter's dad in the films. And, of course, Fran Onsworth, who is the woman responsible for sending the helicopters over Cliff Richard's house. Mm. Uh, of course, because she's head of, uh, well, she was back then, director of news at the BBC, wasn't she? Elaine Page mentioned who? Mentioned, oh, Adrian Rawlings. Oh, right. <laughs> what was that on? You know, it's a good thing you can hear me because I, I, I'm looking down at the screen occasionally by my side on my phone and it's I can see the captions that YouTube is creating at the same time as I'm speaking. And I don't know. I, I'm certainly not saying those words half the time. Did you mention Phil? Really? Well, that's a biggie. I, I I haven't seen I hadn't seen Phil for many many years, and then oh what do you mean about three or four years ago, he was in Priscilla Queen of the Desert, on tour and he got us some some tickets and I took the family along to see Priscilla Queen of the Desert and it was brilliant it was fantastic musical and Phil was great in it. The boys were a little bit taken aback by the by what it was about, but hey, they've got to have their minds broadened, haven't they? They did come out christening christening it uh, "Gay the Musical," which was probably a bit uh, improper, but um, it is a it it, it is a, a what's the name a a, a reference to. Um, the IT crowd, isn't it? So it's not, it's not just picked out of midair. Oh, that needs to be darker. Oh right, Phil's fortieth anniversary. Oh my goodness. Um, you know, who would have thought it, really? And the funny thing is, I mean, he they met at the sixth form, I believe, but I don't remember Maggie at all. I do remember an awful lot. Um, I mean, if you are listening to this and at any point in the future, Phil or Maggie, and, you know, I hope I'm not letting the cat out of back here, out of the back here, but I do remember an awful lot of other girls when it came to Phil. But that was probably before he met Maggie. I would, I would guess. I can remember one party at, uh, I think it was at Phil's house actually, uh, and there were three 
girls sitting in the kitchen all crying over Phil. He was a real charmer, a real heartbreaker. I was jealous as hell. <laughs> oh, I had my moments, mind you. Uh, happy days. Definitely, I agree. It was a wonderful time. Who would have thought that we'd be sitting here all those years on with me painting Volkswagens to try and eke out a few bob? And uh, reminiscing over the wonderful world of streaming internet technology brilliant really isn't it to be honest amazing How far the world, how much the world has changed. Not necessarily for the better, mind you, but it's changed. Oh, yeah, I think we were very, very lucky to grow up in the 70s, you know. I really do. I think it was a great time to have been a teenager. I often hark back to those days, when it comes to music especially. You know, most of the best music that was written, ever been written was written in the 1970s as far as I'm concerned. And it was so much, I mean, music's been the other big part of my life, of course. You know, but, I, and I'm still right, I still write songs now. I've not been able to sing them to anybody for quite a long time. But um, hopefully, when the world opens up again, I'll crawl out of the, uh, crawl out of the primary lose or whatever and, 
and uh, release it. I might actually, uh, I've toyed with the idea of actually playing some of them on uh, in the background here while I, while I paint sometimes to give me a break from talking. This then somebody will be listening to them. But what I was now, what I was saying about the seventies and and music. You know, I don't know whether you remember it in the same way that I do, but you know where I lived in in uh, in Hamley. When I think that I got the Victoria Hall at the top of the road, where I remember seeing as clear as day seeing. David Bowie and uh, Queen, all sorts of different people uh, at the Victoria Hall, 500 yards up the road, or not, not even that probably, when I think about it, probably a couple of hundred yards up the road from our house. And we were so close to the to them, I was twelve foot away from David Bowie through the entire performance. I was right against the edge of the stage for Queen, you know that Queen, who, who at that time were a support band. At that gig, they were supporting Mott the Hoople. You know, and I was so close to everybody during that gig that at one point Ariel Bender, uh, who was the guitarist from Mott the Hoople at the time, was dragged off the stage and actually fell on my head. I mean, you can't, you can't get that now. It's all in huge stadiums and everybody's so distanced. You go to a huge stadium and basically you watch huge televisions all night. But we had music there, right in front of us. Remember the heavy steam machine down the bottom of the street? Europe's largest discotheque. Um, I remember seeing Hot Chocolates there. I remember seeing Thin Lizzy there, Golden Earring. It was brilliant. <laughs> definitely, Karen. Definitely, seventies music is definitely some of the best music ever. <sighs> to be honest, I, st I do wonder sometimes if I'm still writing seventies music. <laughs> I play. I, I I don't actually play much to other people at the moment. I've, I've done a, during lockdown. I've done an awful lot of recording, but it's it's basically. All just uh, been there, sitting in the, s sitting on the computer. Nobody's heard it and everything. But my wife occasionally hears me sort of humming along to to things and everything. And she, at one point, she did say, "You know, you know, it's it sounds very old fashioned." And I thought, well, perhaps it is. I don't know. <laughs> Because I, I, I imagine, Karen, that you've still got quite a thriving live music scene over there in America. Um, in bars and honky-tonks or whatever and all that sort of thing. That in this country is, has died over the past 20, 30 years, really. It's the, it's a lot of the pubs and venues and everything have just either closed down or turn themselves into super super pubs like Witherspoons and, and everything. And it's taken away the the smaller venues. The smaller venues have disappeared. Well, 
Yeah, it's coming along, isn't it? It took me long now, to be perfectly honest. It's amazing how fast it goes when you start putting the body colour on. Oh. Hey, right, cool. That's really cool. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm really jealous. I, I mean, to be honest, I, I am a, an American music fan, really. I mean, the, 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 when I was playing with the bands and everything until a few years back, um, we were blues bands. I mean, I loved the blues. I love. I love the sort of hot blues like Stevie Ray Vaughan and all that sort of thing, and um, and I just I've always I've always I think I've always been quite a sort of lover of Americana, really. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I mean I think. Yeah, I, and I love country music, you know, modern country music very much. Which isn't very big in this country, in England, so... Tell you what, I shall take the plunge and maybe tomorrow or one of the... Well, not tomorrow, but I'm not painting at the weekend. I'll be back on Monday. But maybe when I come back on Monday, I'll put some of the songs uh, that I've recorded over lockdown onto uh, the computer here and I'll, and I'll play them in the background while I'm painting and, and I'll take the risk and let people listen to the damn things. Be kind, though. <laughs> Okay. Time to sit back and have a little look and make sure that everything's going okay. <laughs> yeah and it's actually just literally it's it's just one color really it's all pretty monochrome underneath the cars but the, the shadows bring things to life that's the thing when it comes down to it you know we we often forget that uh, it's a bit like what i was saying yesterday about you know the the darks and the lights uh you know, and without the without the darks, the lights aren't light, and it, it's the same here. You know, the the quite often the interesting bits are in the shadows, and I, and I like to get them in there quite quickly so that when I'm when I put the color in, it's uh, it, it will come to life. In fact, I might put the color in. Let's start to put some colour in now. I think I'll give the give the palette a bit of a clean. In fact, I will be back in one minute. I am just going to go and change my water. Don't go anywhere. I shall be back in a minute, as it says on the screen. Get some clean water before I do the colours.
go. I'm back. Aha. Uh -huh. No, indeed. It's not black. Uh, the only black, the only real black that's there is the, the pigment pens that I've used to do the, the lining to make sure that the lines were straight. But um, other than that, the, the dock that you can see there is a, a bit of a mixture between Payne's Grey and a colour called Neutral Tint. Mainly Payne's Grey, really. And it's just applied, when it's applied thickly, it comes out very black. You can hear me struggling here. I've, there we go. Just grabbed a banana while I went into the house to get the water. Mm. Oh. Do you know this? These subtitles are rubbish. It is not acrylic neutral tint. I didn't even say that. <laughs> uh -oh. I don't know whether you've got the subtitles running there, but I did not say what it just said on the screen. I hope I, I hope you haven't really. It was rather rude. Right, when I so turn off when he says banana. We'll get some uh I'll get some lights on. Finish with banana. Mm. Right. Clean up a little bit of the palette and uh, paint that uh, the back car, the car at the back. Might take a few attempts to get the yellow right. It's quite a rich yellow. I don't know, perhaps it's a long time since you've seen the photograph that I'm working from. There's the, the photograph that I'm working from. And that's quite a rich yellow in the background. Um, and I have to work quite hard to get that with the transparent yellows. I don't like using the cadmium yellows and everything, the, the opaque ones, because to me they go flat. And I don't like watercolour that goes flat. To me, it should all shine all the time, especially yellow. The yellow should sing out. Don't know whether whether it's like where you are, Jeff, but uh, I've just gone outside the studio here. And I just walked out the door, and it's pouring down. It's certainly not hot like it is in Texas, Karen. It's grey, overcast, and it's rainy. Now, I think I will go for some new gumboge at first. Because that's quite a yellowy yellow, which is on, but slightly on the lemon side. 
I think that'll work actually. Where are you now, Jeff? at Sonny Hall. You've become a brummy, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Once a clayhead, always a clayhead, mate, eh? Having said that, a lot of great bands came out of Birmingham, so I can't knock it too much. I was uh, watching a documentary on YouTube the other day with um, Jimmy Lee out of Slade talking and uh, reminiscing over the early days back in the early 70s with Slade and you know they, they, were, they were damn good they were damn good it made me go back and listen to a lot of their their stuff and the, it was musically it was really 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 good stuff Jimmy Lee's an amazing musician there's a video on YouTube of him playing uh, a Hendrix number and he really rips it up and you know he was the bassist in Slade of course now then I need to just change that slightly because I've just noticed that side of that car is not right so let's let's get a bit of green get a dark green going there and just take a quick look at it. It should be straight across there. And then that's better. Jasper, oh yeah, he did well for himself, didn't he? Jasper Carrot. I met Jasper Carrot in 1986, I think it was. He was great fun. When I was working at Spectrum Arena, he came. He came and he did it. It was really interesting actually because he did this thing that I never, I didn't see anybody else ever do, and I saw loads and loads and loads of different comedians and different actors sort of working a working the circuit but he he went on when he arrived at the theatre he went onto the stage and for about 15 20 minutes 
he just tried out material based on the local area and it was like the first 20 minutes of, of the act every night were fresh were unique and and totally different all depending on uh where he was that night but uh, of course yeah when i said he, he he did well for himself he he was one of the first investors in uh who wants to be a millionaire and uh as you said really and truly i'll never have to work again in my life now <laughs> oh a lucky man yeah definitely he's one of those there's a there's a few i think there's a, f a few people from well i suppose all, all time there's, there was there were some um comedians that can just like rip it off you know you see some comedians and you see them time after time and they're actually doing the same act they're doing the same thing over and over again it's all very well rehearsed and everything but then you see other comedians and they you know that an awful lot of what they're doing is just fresh it's um they can just turn it on and jasper was like that he, he i mean he, re he was rehearsing it but rehearsing it on the day you know <laughs> when he got me moped back in the road i'm gonna ride 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 i'll remember it well my friend <laughs> when he get me moped back on the road i'm gonna ride 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 oh the funky moped go funky moped he started something there <laughs> At this point, Karen, if she's still there and listening, is going, what the hell is he going on about? What the heck's a funky moped? Aha. Uh -huh. I'll remember it well. <laughs> I don't know what you was talking about. <laughs> I got a friend, Kay. Um, I painted her VW. I painted her dogs for her as well. But. Uh, Actually, if you've ever got the chance to read, see what the stuff that Kay, Kay did a lockdown diary all the way through lockdown, what's been happening every day, and it was absolutely hilarious. But uh, the, Kay is from, um, is it uh, Dudley? It's from Dudley. And uh, I just always remember when I went. Starting, I think, it was the third start of my third year of my degree at Keele. And Kay was on the music course with me. She was a saxophone player. And that's all I know now as a saxophone player. And uh, we got back at, after the, the the vacation. And we were sitting, me and Kay, just sitting in the, the foyer, just having a chat. And I said, how are you getting on? And I said, did you have a good holiday? And she said, oh, yes. Yeah. She said, oh, yeah. Uh, I was working on a landfill. I said, what? She said, I was working on a landfill. And I thought, what the hell is she on about? I said, oh, I do, I do environmental management. 
And, it's, and, it's so, and you know, I, I had no idea. No idea. And since that time, there's loads of pictures of her on um, Facebook and everything with her high-vis jacket and her hard hat. And she was going up the top of tall chimneys testing the uh, the output of these chimneys and all this sort of thing. You, know, you just don't know with people, do you? But I always remember those lines, always working on it, Enfield. I should have been an actor. Missed my vocation. Or so should I say on oh, I miss my oh, no I'm never going to West Country now. Best not push it. Uh <laughs> oh, no, how are we getting on here? Some orange? It's too red. with the with the burnt umber maybe oh hold on there we go I got it <laughs> I don't think so I think it's a bit late in it I think that ship has sailed as they say I did go and sign up uh, a few years ago, well, about three or four years ago, uh, with a, a company that does uh, sort of walk-on, you know, extra stuff. Um, but, and they sent me all these things of, you know, you can go, go and be an extra on casualty and all this sort of thing and all these different things. But everything, I don't know whether you think I live, but everything they've sent me is miles and miles and miles away, which is absolutely a waste of time for me. Because it makes, it's not as if it pays a huge amount of money and by the time you've thought of, you know, how much it's going to cost you to get there, you are, you know... It's not worth your while going, which is a shame because I'd really love to do it, but they never send me anything that's near enough. Everything's always down in South Wales or Bristol or whatever. Ah, oh, cool. That's cool. Uh, uh, yeah, the company that that I signed up with, they they do um, the series. They do the sex education, which I love. It's brilliant. I would love to have been part of that in some way. But all the shooting and everything, some miles and miles away. I think a lot of it was shot in North Wales. coming together <laughs> yeah don't work for free I'm not into working for free it's, it's uh, your time's got to be worth something hasn't it that's what I say you know it's it's all very well in it one one of the things being an an artist 
is you do occasionally get you get this thing with people getting in touch with you saying oh um be a part of this or whatever you know it'll be you know and you say well how much and you say well no, it'll be good it'll be great publicity for you it'll be great um And I just think, no, it won't. It just means that you're getting my time for free. Why should I give you my time for nothing? So when I had the band, we never... I, th I think the very first gig I did with the, the first band I was with, we did for Dole Money, but that was the last one too. I never, ever worked for Dole Money. It's just not worth it if you... If they want you to work, if they want you to, you know, if they want your talent, they pay for it. No freebies. You've started me off. <laughs> Gonna be stuck in my head all night, that is now. Bleeding funky moped. I'm going to, have, going to have people in the background here and watching me paint and uh, they're going to be thinking, what, the two st what is this I'm listening to, to these two old blokes going down memory lane, you know. <laughs> there we go, might be old but I'm still alive, I made it. Survived so far. <laughs> it does indeed, yes, it does indeed. Well, I'm doing the talking, which is great. No, I can talk as much as I want. Nobody can interrupt. <laughs> Last of the summer winos. Yeah, have a great night, Jeff. Have a, have a, good, have a good night. And I, uh, yeah, pop back in. It's been fun chatting. Tell your friends. Tell your friends what I'm doing. You know, get people to send me photographs and... Let me paint lots of pictures for them. If you've got any friends. I mean, that is, you know, you might not, you might be like me, you might not have any friends. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. As many shares as I can possibly get. Tell you what be what would be helpful, uh, people. If anybody's listening, uh, I don't know what you're watching on at the moment. Whether you're watching on Facebook or on Twitter, uh, but if you are watching on Facebook or or Twitter, um, which I know quite a few people have been, it would be really great if you go over to my youtube channel uh just um 
Steve Bird artist on YouTube uh, and sign up to that subscribe to that and watch it on that I really need to to build it up and it take it it seems to take ages to build up a following on YouTube and actually YouTube is a great platform for watching this sort of thing the quality seems to be a bit better on YouTube I think but um, you know that would be great uh, to get some more subscribers on YouTube out of out of doing this I think I've got 39 subscribers on YouTube which is ridiculous I've got quite a few hundred uh, well probably a couple of thousand actually on Facebook between my two pages and that's, I've got some nearly 6,000 followers on Twitter but I never get any hardly anything out of Twitter which is strange but hey suppose let's go for the the next car the red one got some people I know there's a couple of people watching I don't know uh, how long you've been watching the painting that I am drawing the painting today is based on this photograph sent to me by uh, Bruce who uh, is a fanatic about these wonderful uh, VW Porsche 914s uh, and I, I just think it's a fantastic picture so that's the one I'm working on so that's what uh, that's what this is we get in there uh, okay so let's get the red on the second car Or orange really isn't it okay. anybody that's watching whatever you are watching on I hope you're having a good night or, or uh, if it's still Karen that's watching I hope you're having a good day over in in Texas as you are five or six hours behind us over there aren't you but uh, that's one of the great things with one of the great things with um, the internet and working on the internet is you never really know where people are going to come from I've got followers on on the different platforms that I'm on in um, America I've got people following me in I've done work for people in Australia I've got people following me in um, in India which is always a bit of a, a tricky one because uh, in India they are quite a few hours ahead of us so quite a lot of the time when I'm working they're heading off for bed you know I've got one picture that I did um, a few years ago which is a lovely illustration of that I'll, I'll try and take it out and have a look at it but uh, it's from this uh, lady in uh, Alaska and she sent me this photograph to paint and it was her sitting on a rock in Australia <laughs> which I thought was absolutely fantastic there's her sitting on a rock in Australia and me painting a picture of her in England and then I end up having to send the painting to Alaska which oh, is cool
Oh, <laughs> have you have you been painting a long time, Karen? Or have I? Uh, yeah, when when I did the portrait for you um, a few years ago, were you painting then as well, or is this something you've taken up recently? Try a bit, I think. Fiddling with it. That's nice, that's about the right colour. Some new gamboge. It's coming! It's coming together, I can feel it. That's good. <laughs> now i can understand everyone except the last one why would anybody want to learn to play the bagpipes i really don't know <laughs> oh god yeah cool that's really good so tap dancing the tap dancing potter and watercolorist that's great it, it's I don't know it's a funny old thing watercolour it's uh, I, um, I, I I wrote in a, a blog a few years ago I was sort of reminiscing really about uh, my time at school and everything and it, it strikes me that I don't know what it's like in America but I mean I did art at school I did a lot of art at school and I went on and I did art in the sixth form for A level was that, was that a high school or whatever you call it in in America uh, and I had good teaching. They were very good teachers. But but they, we were never taught how to paint in watercolour or in oils. We were taught with these great big chunky blocks of poster paint and um, 
Now, they were all opaque. There was nothing transparent about it. And, and it wasn't until when I was in my late 20s when I decided to really take a part seriously that I realised that I had to teach myself all the mediums that, that actually artists in general work in. So I had to learn from scratch, even though I'd, I actually went and did half a degree in art and drama. Um, and again, we were never taught how to paint in oils. We were never taught how to paint in watercolours. And I, and I thought to myself, I don't know why that why that's the case. But um, yeah. And then you start to try and work in watercolours, I think, and you realise, oh my goodness, that is not easy at all. It's not what I expected. It's funny, actually, because I think, I don't know, um, I don't know about you, but I find that a lot of people, when they want to learn, teach themselves how to paint, they gravitate towards watercolours straight away, thinking it'll be easier. But I think, to be honest, I think oil painting in many ways is a, is, a, is an easier and a better introduction. It's uh, what there's a, a lot of techniques to learn in watercolour to make it easier to make it come to life. What time is it? Quarter past seven. I think I ought to take a break. I've been in here working for three and a quarter hours on this now. And I think it's about time that I uh, knock this one on the head for a while. I might come back later on and get another hour in. Or I might end up <sighs> carrying on with this one um, on Monday maybe. Or I might grab a couple of hours over the weekend. We'll have to see. There's still quite a bit of work to do on it. It did take quite a long break at lunchtime to go to the gym, so... You've got to do lots of things in life, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. Oil painting it is. It's, it, if it's not going right, you just scrape it off and carry it on. <laughs> Yeah, I've, it's been lovely having you here, Karen. It has, it's been made, you know, what, what, with you there and Jeff turning up as well, it's made the whole thing uh, a lot more enjoyable. It's been like uh, been like a little, little get-together, which has been rather nice, rather than just me sitting alone in this room um, with me paints. So that's the where it is at the moment uh, for everybody that has been watching or might watch in the future um there's another good session left on it to to see it finished which hopefully uh i will get to very very short very very shortly and uh so far so good i think ah so to uh, you, Karen, in, uh, all the way over there in Texas. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely afternoon. And uh, to all the rest of you, thank you very much for dropping in. And uh, if you're watching this in the future, thanks for watching. And uh, I will see you all very soon, probably um, in the next few hours, maybe. Let's see, see how I feel. I might get tired. Um, and... Uh, Till then, have a have a lovely day. Have a nice night. Whatever. Bye bye. You too, Karen. <laughs>